What's up guys? How's everybody today? Let's get to here. Uh, so today I want to talk about an artist that I really like. His name is Tad Mullenix, uh, also known as Daubry, also known as James T. Cotton. He's, I think he might have some other aliases and alter egos. I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, Daubry, I actually have a review for his album he did called Two and Three, I think it's called. It's his uh, kind of hip-hop collaboration album where he made a bunch of like sick sounding beats for like some pretty big named artists on there. They got like MF Doom and Jay Dilla, Guilty Simpson, a bunch of underground folks up-and-coming artists. Anyway, this is his 2002 album called Pains, released on Ghostly International. And Tad Mullenix actually had the first album ever released on Ghostly International with his debut album, uh, Winking Makes a Face, back in 2000. Uh, this album is just an EP. Tad Mullenix is from Detroit, Michigan. And he's always making like very experimental, kind of abstract sounding music. They all sound kind of like They've got a little bit of like murkiness to them, very uh, abstract sounding. This album's got a whole bunch of uh, uh, kind of IDM influence, it's got a lot of dub influence on it. Everything's kind of very, like I said, murky and muddy. All the rhythms kind of slither around or are crawling around on all fours. Kind of sounds like it was recorded. Like, even though it's an electronic album, it's. it's Sounds like it was recorded in like in like some sort of leaky basement in like an old house. There's lots of weird echo going on and weird kind of sick sounding sounds. I really enjoyed this album. I like anything that sounds very very strange, very dark, has a lot of hiss on it. Like I said, a lot of pops and cracks, weird kind of staticky noises going on, but also has like treated sounds and unusual tones and like some songs had like this kind of sound where it sounds like someone's playing like a broken violin, played through some sort of weird filter and like treated bell tones. Uh, there's all kinds of like simple crumpled up bass lines on here too. This whole tape's got a kind of a feeling like he probably recorded this and put it in a tape deck and the tape kind of tape that kind of it chewed up his mixtape form and then he just kind of straightened it out and respooled it and just released it as it was. Uh, but yeah, all kinds of weird weird wrinkly textures on here. They had, for the most part this album's a really kind of slower paced. It doesn't really ever like pick up the tempo at any point. Uh, later on the CD kind of starts using like weird keyboard and synthesizer sounds and making like some songs have this weird kind of piercing sound on them but he's got to get an ear for like what sounds get together and like how to make this very dark kind of foreboding kind of aura about his music. It does mix in a lot of like kind of dark ambient music. If I had to compare this to someone, I'd compare it if you ever listen to like like maybe some of Tricky's early work when he's at his most like out of his mind on drugs or whatever at his darkest. Like really dark ambient Aphex Twin, maybe some Preview 73. Uh, if you guys have ever listened to Jamie Lydell, he's got this CD out called Muddling Gear. It kind of sounds like that a little, but it's very much so unique. Uh, this album is six songs, 27 minutes long. Uh, but yeah, very, very spacey, very kind of damaged sounding. And it's got a lot of subtleties too. Like, I listened to this, I think this is my third listen, and the second listen I listened to it on. I turned up the volume really, really loud, and there's all kinds of things going on beneath the surface, like all kinds of weird minute sounds and details going on in here so he did put a lot of effort into this but yeah very much so experimental very abstract electronic really hard to tell exactly what sounds are going on and what's doing what but if you're into this kind of lazy distorted murky dark kind of electronic music you guys can check this out it came in this weird package too where it's green with this bronze print bronze is the ghostly international symbol there and it was a limited edition too but uh, and a bunch of websites were having this for download, so you can find the songs online, so it's not that rare, I guess. I just picked this up at the record store on the, uh, at most independent record stores, they'll have the stack of CDs in front of the desk, the clerk desk, the till. For CDs, they're either, like, coming in or going out, and this is on the going out pile, so it was at a discount price. And I recognize the name because I've been into Daubry for a few years now. Cause I'm just such an awesome person, just into like obscure hip hop beats, and uh, 
yeah, I picked this up and I was really happy with what I got. All kinds of weird distorted chime sounds and sick sounding bass rhythms, stuff that, you know, totally like headphone music, stuff you have to listen to with an open mind for sure. I've got the kind of mind that I, like, I really enjoy this kind of, kind of nonsense experimental music, but yeah. It's not too abstract though, like there are like actual song structures in here too, it's not just like improv noise or anything, like he actually sat down and like, you know, constructed actual songs out of these, but it's very unusual, like very original sounding, very, just the way he treats the sounds and arranges all the sounds together and adds some really demented kind of damage sounding bass line to it. It's pretty interesting, pretty, pretty cool music. It's not a perfect album by any means, like... Song 5 called Sealed I didn't really like, it just kind of sounded like some weird kind of acid jazz keyboard broken Casio piano jam going on there, but yeah, really cool, not too avant-garde, it's not all that inaccessible, it's just really dark, weird sounding, abstract electronic music. Uh, Cad Mullenix, Pains, released in 2002 on Ghostly International Music, uh, pretty unusual shit, check you later.